Hello and welcome to Frost on Fighting, part two of me and George Groves talking about our first and second fight, which happened at Wembley Stadium. But um, I'm glad to say George is here, obviously. Yep, still here. And um, yeah, so... You just had to, we had to have a break because you need to nip off for a little cry. Yeah, a you? little cry. <laughs> oh, don't I'm start with, making him cry. Don't start with the crying. You, do, you skimmed over that in the first part one. Yeah, I don't want to touch back on that. Uh, right, ringside, on, they had to cancel week... People, you know, people always crying out for ringside to come back. We can't. It got cancelled after that because um, they get, they're worried about Listen, guests crying. I wasn't going to mention it, but I'm glad you did because <laughs> I just, for me, it was ridiculous. <laughs> when you said, Carl, you're going to cry, Eddie, Eddie, is Carl, Carl you're going to cry, aren't you? You're going to cry. Do you actually think, did you think I was going to cry or did you do that to wind me up? I thought you was crying. I mean, you actually the, thought eye, I was the, crying. Eye, the eyes had tears in them. No, there was no tears. Waiting for him to fall. At what point do you think a grown man's going to cry? Well, you. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Listen, I was knowing you, them tears would have come down, but then somehow gone back up. <laughs> they always get up, don't they? They always get up. Yeah, I do definitely <laughs> climb off the canvas. I always get up to win as well. Yeah, which is a bit of a bitch. <laughs> Alex Lewis never done it. I've done it once. Who dropped you? And you got up. Kevin Anderson. Yeah, or Kenny Anderson. Kenny, that's it. I should know that. I sparred him, but yeah, Kenny yeah. Anderson. I was actually. Backing him to beat her. Yeah. Not in a bad way, just because that's part of him. Soft we got quite him up close, for us. I thought. Yeah. But no, he, um, I don't think you gave him very good notice, did you? No. He had late notice. Two weeks' notice, yeah. Yeah, a bit out of order, that. Yeah. <laughs> he might have done you a three weeks' notice. <laughs> he might have, yeah. But anyway, ringside, we're sitting here, me, Eddie Hearn, Johnny Nelson, Adam Smith. You hit me with, are you going to cry? You actually thought I was going to cry. Yeah. You weren't just trying to wind me up. No. So just to confirm, I wasn't going to cry. Like, there was no right, tear. Okay. No, no, yeah. I was fuming. I wanted to like jump off the stall and headlock you and put you into the, a squeeze and choke you out because you wouldn't tapped out. Tears would you? of rage. Tears of rage. That's what they were. But there was no tears. <laughs> so anyway, I'm glad we I'm glad we picked back up on that. Yeah. So the rematch, yep. Wembley Stadium. Yep. Eighty thousand fans. Mm -hmm. Said we weren't going to mention it, but we'll have to. Massive fight. Massive rematch. Captured the public's imagination in a genuine grudge match that was as big, if not bigger, dare I say, as. Chris Eubank, Nigel Ben. It was it was just genuine Neil. It was massive. I mean, Chris Eubank, Nigel Ben feels bigger because you only kind of had linear television then. You had like four main stations. Um, did you even have Channel 4? I don't even know. But there wasn't many terrestrial television channels and it was on that. So it probably got well over 10 million people watching it. Um, I think that our rivalry was as big, if not bigger than that and more genuine as well because... Even though in the rematch, I, I got a psychologist sorting out my, my brain and mm. my logic and emotion. It was still, the public knew the first fight I was wind up. You're this young kid coming through, top amateur, ready to fight for your world title. You got robbed of victory in your eyes and many people's eyes. I got robbed of a conclusive finish in my and all my team's eyes. Mm. And obviously, Howard Foster was good mates with me. Yeah. So we had that rematch. You want good mates. Um, he's just a professional referee, A star yeah. referee who knows the game inside out. Yeah. Um, so the rematch at Wembley, can you, what's your first, see, I know when my point was when, I realised this is big. Yeah. But what point for you, walking out to Wembley Stadium, did you think this this is massive, this is big? And did, did the nerves start to come in? Was it when you got on that double-decker bus? No. Well, no. before then, I could sense the occasion. Uh, I was in the the hotel there. I think it's the Hilton that's at um, Wembley. Looking out the window, just seeing swarms of people going into... The stadium and being like, that's a lot of people. See, I didn't see any of that. So you was at the Hilton right outside the, yeah, yeah right on the corner. I've stayed there a few times. Nice yeah. hotel. I was Nothing. in the apartment like out of town, just out of the way, just in case you got my address. I was like, I need to be in a secret location. And a few people said, do you want me to terrorise him? Because he's in the hotel. And I said, no, I don't want any excuses. Yeah. Don't, no, no one rang the fire bell or tried to boot your door in or anything. No. No. But I didn't stay no, there. No, but it happens, I didn't it? stay there overnight. Oh, I, don't okay. think. I think I just went there in a day to relax. Because a lot of people thought you were staying tally. there and were going to try and find out which room you was in and terrorise you for that the night. That would have been a good idea. No, I wouldn't have done that. No. See, that's your kind of moves, you see. <laughs> that's where me and you differ. Right, yeah. Because I'm like a fair man. Yeah. Strength and honour. The code <laughs> of the warrior. But you would have done that, you see. Is, is, that, is that a Vin Diesel quote? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Who's Vin <laughs> Diesel? Who is that? Hey, um... So yeah, and then yeah, but I mean, then you're you're snuck out back in you. I think I was in the home dressing room. I think that was the only thing I won in the negotiation. Oh, really? I'm pretty. Sh I might I be. Thought wrong. I had the home. Not that I was bothered. You might have. It was, all, ma there was, all, there was all massive, big changing rooms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't um, think it made a difference. You might have been. You might, might have been. been. Deserved to be. So <laughs> I come out, and then I'm on the bus. Yeah, and then you just um, you come out of what would it be? What's the you know, 
it's not a tunnel. It's more than a tunnel. You yeah, know, almost where the, the, where the players the where the players walk out to get on the pitch. Yeah, it is the, the corner part of the pitch. And yeah, it's just swarms of seas of uh, people. You should like you. I remember thinking this is pretty cool. This is big. Yeah, like, I remember what I, they said to me like two minutes and you're in the change of rooms and it's like mm. last minute and the camera guy comes in and then coos you and then I thought shall I keep him waiting. Just like to be an idiot. So you've told and me thought, before you were nervous before the first one because you had little doubts whether you were ready or not. Yeah. Was you nervous for the second one as well? Not nowhere near. I mean, I get nervous for every fight. Nerve, nerves for me when I became a world champion, when I became confident and, and didn't used to worry about nerves or get really scared to the point where, why am I boxing? Why am I even doing this? Especially in the amateurs. I was like, why, haven't, why, why, why don't I just stick to rugby or something? Where mm. you've got a team or take up football. Because you're on your own with boxing. And it's nerve wracking in them changing rooms. And uh, as a pro, when I became when I became world champion, when I beat Pascal in two thousand eight, after that, and after climbing off the floor with Jermaine Taylor and retaining my belt, I thought to myself, right, I do actually belong here. Well, I am world class. I am world level fighter. I can fight the, and compete with the best of them and win. So the nerves then were controllable nerves. It was like, right, I'm nervous, but I know what's happening. The adrenaline's kicked in. The heart's racing. Took a deep breath. Right, use this now for for strength and energy and sharpness. And um, Yes, I was nervous um, on the ring walk for the Wembley fight. Came out of the changing rooms and I could hear the roars of the crowd and the noise in a stadium, the, the sound dissipates into the air instead of kind of bouncing off the ceiling. So it's less intense, but more kind of Colosseum vibes because mm. the, the noise just goes into the atmosphere and it just sounds amazing. Mm. Like when you watch Gladiator with Russell Crowe and you've got that roar, you can just think of the Colosseum and picture, well, I can anyway. I don't know if I was a gladiator or a Viking back in the day, but mm. I feel like I'd be well suited to that because I just love the brutality of boxing. And mm. I love punching people in the head and taking punches and having a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight and thinking, right, if, if I get beat and I've lost to the, the better man, then fair play. Like Mikel Kessler beat me in that, in that first fight. I was like, I was good to the lost my world title, but it was such a good fight. I was just, I was proud to be involved in such a great fight. When I lost to Andre Ward, I was like, I, I, it was difficult for me to come to terms with that because it was better than me, it was quicker than me, but it was holding me and it was awkward and messy and I felt like I'd been pickpocketed. I've lost my belt, I don't even feel like I've been in a fight. That first fight with you, I was, I was, I knew, I looked in the mirror and I knew I'd been in a fight. Yeah, and I, I was felt pickpocketed And I was well. in pain. Did you feel pickpocketed? Yeah. yeah. Um, I kind of get, I kind of, kind of get that a little bit, but so you, when you, you watched it back, you'd change your mind, didn't you? Yeah. You're <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Did you uh, did you pick your ring ring music that time? So I know sometimes you don't. Ring music was ACDC, Shoot to Thrill. Did you know it was going to be that? Did yeah, you I picked pick that. I picked that. Yeah. So you yeah, so you're in the zone for yeah. that. Yeah, we were rock you Queen into ACDC. I think it was nice. just to get the crowd going. But Rob yeah. McCracken likes ACDC, so I kind of did that for him as well. So you want Rob pumped as well at this point? I don't really want Rob pumped. No, he's too chilled. It's hard to pump Rob up. Like I remember, I got him a shot of absinthe on his honeymoon because I went yeah. out and gate crashed his honeymoon. How did that it's a bit go? Weird. It was good. He, he enjoyed it. <laughs> We had a laugh with him. Does he still talk about it now? He does, yeah. yeah. But he don't drink. He, right. he just he just don't drink. But I got him a shot of absinthe. Yeah. Well, if he's going to have one, he might as well have a proper one. Yeah, like, that's it. I think Jack the Ripper used to drink absinthe. Yeah, I can imagine you want to get Rob pumped. Like, you're like, Rob, come on. No, Big Rob night was, for me, come on. Rob's too cool and calm and just making sure I'm focused. But I can remember coming out to there, the, the sound, the noise. You was already in the ring. The light was bouncing off the top of your bold tweed. I had hair um, back then. Did you have hair? Like I got hair now. You got yeah. hair now. You yeah. didn't have much of hair then. So you have now. I had hair. Well, I had enough hair. Yeah. You've had a bit of work tonight, haven't you? I've had a bit of work. A little bit, yeah. But anyway, forget the hair. Yep. Forget the hair. It's looking all right, though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, have you seen Kingpin? Thanks. Bill Murray, Woody Harrelson. At the end, when he's got That's a little. About, no, I haven't no, seen it. Is it good, yeah? <laughs> no, it's good, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm walking out to this ring and I'm looking at you. And I'm just tunnel visioned. I'm not interested in the crowd. So, the was lights. you looking at me as you was ring walking? I was looking at the ring and my heart's beating. I'm feeling the energy and the, um, it's just, it's just probably my best ring walk ever. Did um, you have a plan? Like, once you're in the ring, you know, like sometimes you're thinking, right, am I going to make a, eye contact listen, with Listen, I had a plan. I did have a plan. Yeah, I'll tell you about that now. But walking to, to the ring, yep. I knew it was my last walk. No one else knew. My wife knew. Rachel knew. I told her it's my last fight. I didn't tell Rob McCracken because there was a chance I would have maybe fought again, but for the wrong reasons. It would have been for money rather than for, for the love of the sport and desire. I just thought, this is it. I've beat Kessler. Uh, I've, I've had that first fight with you, which was a nightmare. And now this is it. This is win or lose. And in my head, I'm winning. I've got to get this fight won. I've got to just leave it all in the ring. If it's going bad for me, I'm going in face first. I'm going to just throw everything. Hands, elbows, heads, everything's going in. I'm just going to try and just terrorise you. And not in a bad way, or I would rather get disqualified than lose. 
but I was going to start getting rough and horrible. But the, the fight didn't really pan out like that. But anyway, on the ring walk, the crowd, the energy, it was just, for me, it was the best ring walk ever, bar, bar the Lucian Butte ring walk in Nottingham, because that was special. But this was like my last one. It was emotional as well as, as, well as I was vibing, as well as being a little bit emotional. And um, I didn't want to look at you, because I didn't want to give you anything. So when I got into the ring to answer your question, I don't know if you noticed, but I turned my back on you straight away. And the whole ring announcements, I've never done it. I looked at my corner post and I just let you look at the back of my head. I think you can just look at my head. You're not going to get that little eye contact and that little, oh, you think you're winning something. So you must have been thinking, fucking hell, Frotch is serious here. He's not even looking at me. Or was you thinking, oh, he's, he's worried he's not even looking at me. But I got in there mm. and I just gave you my back for the whole announcement. And then I turned around, came to the centre of the ring, made eye contact with you and smiled at you with that new gum shield, which was like the jaw realigning gum shield. I forgot what the brand of it was, but it's supposed to make you punch harder. And I heard that you wanted one of them gum shields, actually. I forgot what the brand was. Can you remember that conversation about this new gum shield that was out the, doing, the, doing the rounds? No, but we've spoke about it since. But yeah, I think, I think someone was making you feel better saying that. Yeah. I wanted you one, and, but you and got exclusive use, I got it yeah. first, yeah. So anyway, you, it, it realigns your jaw and makes you so light. You know when you're trying to do something, you tense up sometimes. Yeah. It's supposed to make you punch harder. Obviously it worked. It did. Yeah, it worked. But anyway, I looked you in the eyes, smiled at you with that logo. And in my head, you was looking at that gumshield thinking, oh shit, he's got that punch your old gumshield. And for my head, that was a win. That was like, he's not- Do you know who else it? it was a win for? The bloke who gave you that gumshield. <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? So, and that gumshield got brand, nicked. That gumshield- in front of his mouth, that like- gumshield, Yeah, but I forgot the brand. The gumshield got nicked as well, unless uh, Mark also kept hold of it. He sold it on eBay. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's kind of some of my thoughts on the ring walk. What was your perspective in terms of going from that double-decker boss? Did that, that didn't leave Shepherd's Bush, did it? And come all the way from he didn't come all that way on that. No, no, so no. So from no. the double decker bus <laughs> into the ring, what what was that like for we you? Did, I did a bus tour from Stamford Bridge to Wembley uh, promoting the fight because someone Thank had you. someone had to promote the fight. I appreciate <laughs> was, that. Yeah, uh, so we'd already got that in in the bag. Uh, no, that bus was just hidden behind. They didn't want to use it. Some someone health and safety or someone. Didn't Always someone, it. isn't there? Yeah, but in we, the was, way. Like, we insisted on it. Did you strangle them or just? No, no just, um, got it. Sorted. Well, I didn't. Maybe someone else did. Um, there might be some, yeah, no one in the in the back of the bus. Yeah, the bus was cool. Come out pyrotechnics. We had fire breathers. We had this. We had that. Um, Kasabian underdog because that's what I thought I was. I was an underdog. Um, and then yeah, ring walk. Ring walk. Let me stop you. You went from looking around, being chilled, and then all of a sudden, I don't know if I'm too old for this, but. Do you remember the bushwhackers back in the day? The American wrestlers? No. You turned into like a bushwhacker. Because right. all of a sudden you did this walk with your arms and you was like st looking at the ring. Was that part, was it like, was you just angry yeah. or just wanted to get there? Yeah, both. Um, Need to have a look I at I like them. that look. Yeah. I'll check the bushwhackers out. Yeah. Um, Jake the Snake Roberts, Hulk Hogan. I know yeah, Hulk Hogan. Or, yeah. Yeah, it did have that bit of wrestling vibe, granted. Like, that's because it's entertainment. I mean, it's not sport, it's entertainment, isn't yeah. it? So, you know, at this point, I'm thinking about the entertainment. But uh, you didn't do aspect. a bushwhacker walk for the entertainment. You was like in the zone. Both. Like, you marched to the I ring. I always fast. wanted to, I wanted to look like, um, I'm competing with you, Carl. Everyone's telling me how hard you are. I want to look hard too. Oh, so, okay, I feel like enough. I marched the ring. So, anyway, let, don't I don't let me break like your vibe. So, you've ones. done the bushwhacker ring walk. Bushwhacker in Got the, into ring. the ring. Then what's happened? I'm waiting for you. Um, and I didn't keep you waiting, did I? No, I don't, don't think so. No. I, I mean, yeah, you, it was a long way. It's a nice, it's a nice long ring walk. Champion comes in second. Yes. Um, so you came in second, and uh, yeah, you jumped in the ring, and then you gave me the back. And I remember thinking, oh, he's got a good back. That's interesting. Wide, like that's, that's a knockout back. No, go on. <laughs> oh, I'll stop stopping. He's you. narrow. No, yeah. I'd, uh, I'm glad you interrupted because there wasn't much to say about the back, to be honest. It was pretty mediocre. Um, and then, yeah, you, you turned and you gave me this weird smile. That freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> Turns out you want to show me your gum shield. But, uh, so you didn't, you didn't uh, see uh, it? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, um, and the battle starts. I think, I think with, with hindsight now, just trying to go back and think about it, there probably was loads of pressure on both of us that didn't I, that I didn't notice or feel at the time or or felt but didn't realize um because it is a cautious cagey fight i didn't anticipate being able to do you want to wait till somebody's knocking on the door the dog's barking but we're good carry on 
some guard dog you got apologies for that <laughs> hey, when you're as hard as me you don't need a big guard dog <laughs> I've got a chihuahua he's about that big <laughs> but you've got two bull mastiffs haven't you yeah <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah two two ball massives and a, and a little chihuahua. Yeah. Oh, you got so a chihuahua got as well. Do you take him out in your, in your handbag? Mm. Um, your, your where man are bag. we? Yeah. So yeah, no, yeah. So it's a, it's a cautious fight because the, I feel like the pressure's on. Like I didn't anticipate being able to just you know floor you straight away. I knew you would be more cautious, so you're not going to cross your legs, walk into range, walk onto a big shot. So. This is a boxing match. I thought I was a better boxer than you, or uh, hoped I'd be a better boxer than you. Just had a quick flashback. You mm. hit me with two right hands. You said to people you was going to hit me with two right hands in that first one. Mm. And then you came out and hit me with a right hand. You didn't hit me with two right hands. It was one. And you took one. But there was no light. You told me about the left hook on the build up to the second one. You wasn't yeah, yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. like left hook. We'll, we'll tie that in. Um, so, yes, build up to the second one, said left hook at the last laugh in the media workout fight week yeah. at Westfields. But the start of the fight was, like you said, it was more of a boxing kind of feeling each other out, just the jab, the range, the distance. But did you notice at the time, because my plan was to take the centre of the ring, put you on your back foot and not give any ground? Because if I give you momentum behind that jab and that right hand, then I'm in trouble because you've got momentum. I'm on my back foot trying to counter punch. I'm not as fast as you. Did you feel like you was under pressure with the feet or did you just think you were quite comfortable boxing behind your jab? No, not really. I mean, I was a back foot fighter. Yeah, then. So he was fine boxing. So I could, you know, some fighters can't fight off the back foot. I felt like I could and I would and I should. Um, yeah, and take, 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 take uh, take my time with it. And um, not much happened, did it? First four, five, six rounds, tip for no, tap. No, not really. You could have scored it either way. I think I was probably just ahead. You reckon I was ahead? No, I was ahead. No, I was ahead. So we ahead. differ there. We would disagree yeah. with that again. We agreed and to then disagree. It was like almost getting into the later stages of the fight, as in we got past the six and round seven, round eight. Was it round nine or was it round eight? Round eight. Round eight. So... I think the fight starts building. Second half of the fight, there's a bit more action. It was now. a bit close. I was getting a few body shots through. You was answering back. You'd landed a, an awkward screw jab whatever shot it was, straight in my jaw, knocked me back, stumbled me back a bit, I had a few people was out of the seats, but nothing major. And then it was just, that fight was just all about the finish mm. for me. There was nothing happening, not happening. I've got you on your back foot, I'm, circ I'm making you circle the ring, I'm in the centre of the ring, not taking a step backwards unless I'm forced back, but then straight away back on my front foot. And then it was just that one punch, and that was it for me. It was like a little fake, left up, check up, right hand, straight down the pipe, straight on your very lane. Flattened, and there's no pictures of you up in this whole house of you flattened. Actually, there might be one. It's the one over there. But did you not see one have you? And I've not took any down because I'm not really, I'm not that kind of guy. Ah, uh, sweet. I'm not like looking out thinking what I'm not going to I have that, that picture up in my house either. So <laughs> You're not going to? No. no. no uh... a <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's a big moment in boxing. Mm. Wembley Stadium, 80,000, big rematch. That was. That was the catalyst. I think me and you created what was to then come, and I think we should be proud of that. Yeah. Are you proud of it? I'm proud. Or would of you it. rather forget the moment? No, I'm proud of it now. Yeah. As time's gone on, was wanted to forget about it. But for as it took you a long time. time to come to terms with that loss. Yeah. How long? Uh, well, years. A couple of years, seriously. Yeah. Years and years and years and years. Because I can remember the first time when we actually met each other face to face and had a chat, and it was a, a Sky Sports broadcast. Um, I don't think the top of the bill was that good, so they kind of got me and you in as main event on commentary on, on pun, as pundits. And you come, you came into the the like the production meeting, what we have like the talent meeting before the fight, and it was like ten minutes late. And I think you'd already seen my brother outside, which you told me after. But I can remember you coming in, the door going, and everyone looked around like it was late, and it was you. And I was thinking, oh, there's George. And I can remember feeling a little bit like nervous. Like, oh, I've got to break the ice of him. You didn't really look at me. You sat down. Can you remember not like, looking at me? Or did you yeah, know I was Yeah, I remember I thought, don't look at you in case you've got the arm with me. So you uh, thought I'm I might late still have beef. I'm late to anyway. Yeah, you're late for a meeting. It is what it is, isn't it? Don't mind if you're late for the meeting. Yeah. Well, actually, it does. You, get, you do get it. I don't like it. No, they're not like yeah. it. But anyway, I made... I didn't book the taxi. So I made either. the effort to come over to you. Yeah, you did, yeah. That and was I'm, sweet. Yeah, and it was it was just Sam, wasn't it? Yeah. I said, hello, how are you doing? Yeah. What's happening? Because Carl beats me at Wembley, right? But he then retires and becomes um, Sky Broadcaster, don't you? Yeah. So you're at my comeback fight yeah. uh, against Christophe Rabras and we're not on good terms yet. And I don't know if we ever will be at this point. And I thought, oh, Sky have done a, a dirty one. Maybe the main event wasn't good enough. They brought you in for a bit of, uh, a bit of cheekiness. 
And um, I remember you, I didn't, I boxed all right, but I won. It was nothing to write home about. And Carl said, I've been cobra <laughs> Did I say you've been cobra on the broad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he said, you, I think he's been yeah, cobra He's not the same. He's, he's been yeah. cobra And that shows that I still had the ump with you. Yeah. Because I didn't want to give you any credit. Even and though I you won, I was like, no, you. he's not been the same. No, he's, he's almost like you finished. Yeah. Like you'll never win a world title. I still had beef, but I wasn't angry towards you. But I was still thinking, no, I'm not giving him any credit. Yeah, not good. I'm not giving him credit. He I like deserve that. Credit. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's fine. But that was the first time I saw you at the Sky Broadcast, as in to have a conversation with you. Yeah, I that was talk... years later. I'd retired. Yeah, it was think. like at least two years later, wasn't it? Maybe even three. I think I was I was retired, so it was 2018. Yeah, and we had a good chat. 19. Yeah. That's about your, your family life. You kid, you got kids, and yeah, we, we, a few things have come. You said you spoke to Lee outside, and Lee was sound because you had a bit of beef with Lee. But my yeah. brother was drinking quite heavily there and doing other things, and he's. He's like eight years sober now. Mm. So you had a good chat with Lee. Then me and you had a chat. And I just think everything was laid to rest from then, wasn't it? Me and you. No, it was. Of, yeah, it was. And it's got, common ground, it's got, wasn't it? Yeah, easier with time as well. We've done loads of functions together now. Yeah. And then also you've heard my side of the story. I've heard yours. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's... Uh, we'll still never agree on that first fight stoppage ever. Do you not think? No. Do you know you haven't decided to change your mind? No. Is that just saying you just won't? No. That overhand won't right. Give. That, that overhand right. That you won't give. Struck you to your legs before the stoppage. The, the fight could have carried on, but the fight could have also been stopped. It was one of them. It wasn't a ridiculous stoppage, but you still <laughs> you would always be adamant that that fight should not have been stopped. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what made the rematch so big. Yeah. And um, we've got respect for each other now because you went on to win a world title. Yeah. And um, I've got four world titles. So yeah. you obviously. <laughs> You've obviously got a bit of respect for me as well, I now, have, haven't you? I have, I have. Yeah, I like have. jokes aside, no, you're like, of course, yeah. You lost to someone who's not bad. He's all We're right, on the build yeah. up to the first one. You just couldn't give me any credit, could you? No, nah, not really. Annoying. Okay. Like that was. But anyway, so yeah, for me, that that fight at Wembley was my last fight. So, so if that's my defining fight, and that's what people remember me for. Then great, I won. The, I won the fight in front of all them people, and. And, and got that one punch knockout and I can retire happily on that and I've retired happily on the back of that and, and never been in the ring since but for you if you never achieved what you achieved I think that would have been a bad pill to swallow and that's why I was so happy for you because I could put myself in your position after a couple of years went by and being there on your comeback fight and then when you lost to Badu Jack I was watching that fight and I like, genuinely wanted you to beat Badu Jack I like Badu Jack I think he's a great guy a good fighter I think you're better than him, more skillful than him. You've got more tools in your box. But what he does, he does really well. And you was, in, you was involved in a really close fight with him. Did you lose a split decision? Yep. So split decision loss for another world title fight campaign. Losing that, for me, I was, I was thinking, oh, that, that's going to be the end of George now. His, his head's going to cave in. Like Mentally, he's not going to be able to cope with that and come back from that. But you stuck with it. In your very next fight, it was Chudanov. And you became WBA world champion. And, and I, I've, I've mentioned it before. And... I was genuinely proud of you and, and happy for you that, that you got that win, like genuinely. And we'd not really made up from then. I, I was just thinking, he deserved to win a world title. Mm. He's a top It's better for me if you win a world title as well, because I beat you. But I'm not <laughs> thinking, I wasn't thinking for selfish reasons. Oh, if he wins, it makes me look better. Um, but like genuinely, and you became world champion. And that for you must have been like a massive, in your career and your life as a professional fighter, for you and your family and you, your wife and your kids and, Everything, you must look back on that and say that was the point when I became world champion and it finally happened for me. And was you able, did that make it easier then to kind of accept what happened with our two fights? Yeah, it made it much easier to forgive you. Yeah, it did. <laughs> to like you even. Uh, and yeah, I mean, thank you, Carl. I uh, appreciate your kind words. I always appreciate your kind words. Um Straight away, that was what loads of loads. I mean, everyone was happy for me to win the belt, and first and foremost. But then the next topic was, oh, and did you see Carl get out of his seat and and clap your? Um, and I knew at that point you'd sort of gone past the point of it's not people pleasing. I thought mm, no. I need to. I've been retired a couple out. of years. Yeah, as well. exactly. So, um, and you are a couple of years older than me, Carl. Even though yeah. you know you like to De tell people decade. who don't look at it. yeah decade older you're a couple of, you got and you're a couple of years more more wiser than me yeah. you know you're uh, you were further along in your career and you'd faced obstacles and so i look at you for guidance sometimes without sometimes even asking i go what would what would frotch do no you're laughing i'm not i'm serious i go what would frotch do yeah i'm waiting for the punchline no 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 <laughs> there's no more punching um so I yeah I appreciate it. we're in an exclusive club of uh, retired ex. I appreciate champions. that. I'm not a bad idol so to have. 
Oh, no, geez, you're right. And I'll, um, d- I'll sign you a picture as well. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I joke to sign. No, like <laughs> people still ask me for signed stuff with your signature on it, and I was like, I can't ask him that. <coughs> and whenever you want something signed, yeah, well, you do, don't you? You yeah, 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 yeah. You got loads last no, time. No, um, yeah, I pre and yeah, and then it, it aided it aided the forgiving process because yeah, I thought I'd despised you since Wembley, but actually I despised you from. Um, that. from Manchester yeah. and then um, and then and probably despised you more and more as, as it went on but then the forgiving process started when I won the belt yeah. um, and then yeah it might have taken a year or so to actually get to the point where we could uh, talk and we were doing shows together and now I drive halfway around the country to sit in your uh, presence which I appreciate Hmm. You should have definitely spoke to my sports psychologist after that fight. Yeah, it. yeah, I can that would that. have been that would have been handy to sort your head out. You, it works. He, no one reached out. No. What's his name? Chris Martin. He Chris pl- Marshall plays, a, plays a for Coldplay, isn't he? Chris Marshall. Oh, Marshall. No, sorry, it's not Coldplay. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I always get that. But wrong. no, it's good. It's good that um, we're now on mutual ground, friendly terms, and I really appreciate you jumping in your Rolls Royce Phantom, smoking up that M1 to come and see me. Oh, thanks, Carl. Oh, we're having a pull and a push on that. <laughs> we ended on a... We ended up on a Someone called it a Bentley earlier. Was it not a Bentley? It's not a Bentley. Not a Bentley not, what Bentley have you got? It's not a Bentley. Why have you got a Rolls Royce? You're like 10 years younger. Even I'm not ready for a Rolls Royce yet. It's a Wraith. It's two-door. Yeah, it's, it's still it's like, I know, it's a bit sporty. It, yeah, it's still a bit, bit best of both worlds, mate. Yeah. Copy of everything. Do you rag it around as well? Do you like have no. a bit of fun with it? No. no you don't. It's sit back and chill. You're not even driving today. It's got it's his mate. He's got his mate to drive today. The talent sits in the back. <laughs> I like it. But anyway, lovely. Good to see you, George. Thanks, Carl. So this has been Frotch on Fighting with me, Carl Frotch, and George Groves. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. We're going to be doing them every week. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.